Good morning, good afternoon. Depending from which part of the world you're connecting to the 2022 edition of the CIGG Global in Seoul. I'm honored to share with you the vision of Seoality on future CIGG wireless systems going toward CIGG networks, beyond Shannon towards semantic based AI native networking and recomfortable intelligence surfaces assisted communications. My name is Emilio Calvanese Strinati. I'm the Future Wild System Research Program Director, the RISE G Coordinator, and the new CG NSF Director. If you want to contact me after the presentation, here you have my email. In 1926, the visual Nikola Tesla stated, when a wireless is perfectly applied, the whole Earth will be converted into a huge brain. By 2030, responding to the fundamental human and societal needs, and based on the expected progress of ICT technology, such prophecy may become a reality. CG will play a significant role to provide an ICT infrastructure that enables end users to perceive themselves as surrounded by the huge artificial brain, offering virtually zero latency services, unlimited storage, and immersive cognitive capabilities. New services and new use cases will appear, enabling Five Sense Interactive Hologram Technology that teleport people from one place to another on the Earth while not supporting connection for interactive 6G sky services. Interactive optic communications, human to human, human to machine, or also with artificial intelligence, but also between different generation of people that will interact together through optic communication. For instance, in the context of industry for the zero and their evolutions. New services will set new challenges with drastic performance uh, enhancement in terms of latency, in terms of digital latency, in terms of joint design of communication, computation, caching, and control to attend on overall effective tasking or actuation. We also will see the need for ultra high capacity links going to the order of a terabit per second, either ter tens of terabit per second and an overall a artificial intelligence native connect compute design of the network. Among the different type of new services that we will see in CIGG, one of the revolutionary one is the interconnection of natural artificial intelligence. We refer to this service as a semantic service, where communication indeed will not only be a matter of exchange between humans, but between machines and artificial intelligence agents that will interact directly. This revolution will create a momentum for a new class of service, the semantic service, and somehow we already have a glimpse of that with the new explosion of the metaverse. Semantic service will support all applications involving a share of knowledge between interactive intelligent parties. The application will not indeed are bounded only to humans, but also to artificial intelligence. And the goal of the service will to achieve seamless connection and intertwinings of different kinds of intelligence, supporting effectively empathic and optic communication, effective computing, autonomous and bidirectional collaboration between cyber physical systems, etc. This new type of service would indeed offer intelligence as a service, bringing the radical paradigm shift that will revolutionize the wireless service from connecting things to connective intelligence. Academia, industry, and the statistician bodies have been working on the definition of the key PIs, key performance indicators that will define CIGG. Except for the detail numbers that most of you will know, what I want to emphasize here, there are two families of key PIs. Key PIs, there actually are C from system level point of view to improve the, the performance of 5G. And indeed, those are key PIs that ensure the conceptual continuity with 5G, but also extend the performance requirements of the already envisioned set of KPIs. And in turn, new CG system level KPIs that will support new features, as for example, connect com computation intertwining of intelligent networks, also the, to extend the connect, compute, store, and control capability to non terrestrial networks. So here, the matter will not only be to have a connectivity on, on, on the ground, but also having service that will uh, consider, for example, fine drones, low orbit satellites, 
uh, low orbit fabrics uh, and so on. And to address the sustainability of technology, sustainability of network operation, uh, the task and inference, and also the electromagnetic field radiation reduction. But the real question is how those can be achieved. And actually, it, this is not only a software update, it's not only an uh, architecture update that really require deep changes in the hardware. So which are the three, for our point of view, technology pillars? The first one is on the subterrestrial communication. So communication goes between 90 gigahertz and say 200 gigahertz. We can also push that to the extreme to, 20, to 400, 450 gigahertz band. The edge AI semantic artificial intelligence intertwining. That means so we have edges with embedded intelligence and we are also have set, we are set in communication for respect to the two intelligent want to understand each other more than just merely transfer precisely bits one to another. And this is actually the paradigm of semantic communication. And the third one is the use of new materials and massive and intelligent antennas. So going to a paradigm, for example, holographic MIMO and recover with intelligence phases. All these three pillars actually are strongly related to our machine learning and artificial intelligence, either to enforce the design of next generation AI interface and new compensation techniques in the hardware, or to offer processing and reasoning capability to, to the edges which are embedded with the inte uh, artificial intelligence through the semantic communication, or to optimize the reuse or reconfigure the intelligence phases and the resources, or to also to optimize selectively some KPIs, for example, uh, using RS in an orchestrated way, only enhancing the energy efficiency and or the secrecy and or the reuse factor resources, or lowering the electromagnetic field radiation and so on. So if you take from a classical approach, what we've been doing in the last 70 years, and it is to conceive networks, raising for faster and higher capacity links. So if you take it as an example, this is the only formula we'll present today. If you take as an example uh, from information theory, the Shannon uh, capacity formula that have been defined more than 17 years ago, we're actually, you, you define the maximum rate at which information can be transmitted over a communication channel of a specified bandwidth in presence of Gaussian noise. And this actually is information from one single user. This establish a theorem, a a theorem uh, called Shannon capacity, where actually you bound the link capacity to the maximum amount of error free information per time unit that can be transmitted. But to achieve this, to achieve this announcement, what we do, what we've been doing the last five generations, we've been enlarging the communication bandwidth. That actually, this was leading indeed from another perspective to reach for higher carrier frequency, since approximately we have a good energy efficiency of our other components, where uh, when we use 10 to 20% around the carrier frequency. So example, in five gigahertz, you, get, uh, you have hundreds of megahertz of, of bandwidth available at 300 gigahertz, you have a nominally, uh, we can go up to 50 to 60 years of bandwidth. But we also have the lead of shrinking the communication links, something I've been doing in 4G and 5G with uh, this mode style approach. We have a source and destination very close to each other, going from kilometers to tens of hundred meters of distance. Also improving the special efficiency. I've been doing a hell of the work in the last uh, tens of years. So with uh, with uh, many types of diverse technique, like coding, MIMO, massive MIMO, reconfigurable intelligence interfaces, new adaptive waveform design, interference cancellation techniques, and so on. But also improve the receive signal power, either by boosting the transmission power, but with consequent impact on uh, the multi-user uh, interference, and or increasing the antenna gain by designing multi-element antennas. The cruel hard reality, I would say the cruel hardware reality, is that exploring IS spectrum is costly in terms of new technology that to be designed and new preserved to be designed too. And also the, the truth is that most of those technology are not available yet for those frequency. And most technology, technology risk not to be available in 2030. So if you take an example of subterrestrial communication here, for example, one or two major issues we have, first of all, is the, is the huge uh, losses we have in the connection between the, the ref front end and, and, and antennas. And actually this require new, new, new techniques of co-design as uh, we are doing, for example, in CA, we actually, by co-design the RF, the record frequency modules and antenna, we actually limit a lot of these, uh, these losses. Just to give an example, in mini-rate communications, the one using 5G, 
those losses represent hundreds, a factor of hundreds, okay, already, so which is huge. And this actually opened the way for new CMOS frontiers, new transistors, new material separation, and so on. But another point probably is also that power amplifiers, uh, actually they are based on different type of technology, not all can output the, the, uh, the required uh, output power in the system. For example, if you use a FinFET, we have a kind of limited output power, it can work with very small uh, carrier frequency. Then we go higher, for example, after the we improve the, the, the output power with a good energy efficiency, but see we're limited to uh, 130, 140 gigahertz. And there is a problem that if you go, want to explore the spectrum after 180 gigahertz, we have a depth valley, how we call in, uh, in our jargon, actually a depth valley, but there's no identified technology that can be used here. So there's a lot of research here. So, so the idea of going just for higher frequency is not only system uh, level view, is not only an architectural point of view, is not only a software upgrade. There's a really hard work we have to do at the other, 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 other level. So for this reason, we founded an initiative, the new SIGG initiative, non-electronics and wireless for SIGG, in order to establish a strong link between the microelectronic community and the telecommunication community and to address this problem in SIGG. We address several topics, the AGI, the security, the new antennas and materials, the network architecture, new hardware design, the sustainability and performance. And if you want again to have more details, please contact me. A fundamental revolution that SIGG will offer is the rethinking the whole data generation to use chain. The design of future wireless communication will require a systematic trade-off between improving the performance through design of new hardware, new artificial intelligence mechanism and new technology, network management and operation. But also it requires support for sustainable evolution of society and economics. Citing John von Neumann, there's no sense in being precise when you don't even know what you're talking about. In 1949, Shannon Weather already defined three levels of communication system. The level A, where they say they address to the technical problem that belongs to the problems of how accurately can the symbols of communication be transmitted. The level B, the semantic problem. How precisely do the transmitted symbol convey the desired meaning? And the level C, the effectiveness problem, how effectively does the received meaning affect conducting in the desired way? So in 1949, given that the mathematical tools we have and the needs we have in designing communication networks, Shannon provide a rigorous form a formulation of the technical problem, lying the foundation information theory, but also in the deliberate way, left aside the aspect related to semantic and effectiveness in communication. So you can see here in the picture that there are these three levels, you know, the level A, the technical level, the one we are been working for the last 70 years, where actually we have all these pieces of, 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 of the communication chain. We know about the, the search channel encoder, the network tracking engineering, the, the physical channel we have noise interference and so on, and also the source channel uh, decoder. But on top of that, there is a, a more logical channel. We actually, is at the semantic level where we generate semantic uh, message uh, extract from a, from a source, data source, where we have a semantic channel that actually means the source and destination speaks or do not speak the same language, share or not share the same models for logic and understanding. And the level C, the effective one, where actually you have a source, we, you have a destination, you have an environment where the communication is performed, and there are knowledge database at the search of destination and share knowledge with source destination that enable to extract from the source semantic, uh, semantic message and to actually uh, understand or infer uh, from semantics message uh, action and understanding for, for, for the level C. So we have now a potential with CG to go for a very fundamental paradigm shift. Learn to communicate and communicate to learning. Because we are speaking about system where we have intelligence agents interact together, either 
natural or artificial, where you can see they have a the sender can see as a teacher and the receiver is to see as a, uh, as a learner. So the sender in sending complementary data or observation from the real world or for cyber world, the actual are translated into mainful concept. They, are, they are make sense for, for, the, for the receiver, which actually is indeed able to perform informed decision. And which are the gains for so gain of the semantic communication? First of all, I'd say the most understandable one is the data compression. And we actually, in listen, our first experiment, we see that we have a potential something goes around, depends, of course, on the scenario and the context, at least of a factor of 1,000. Then the robustness, robust to communication, inference, uh, uh, to test accomplishment, and so on. We, and actually here what we have, the, Thanks to this understanding we have, we can able to create some aerosols. So we have the wireless channel. And indeed, we have this compromise between the robustness of the communication versus the ambiguity, how precisely we express and formalize concept for the receiver. And also the other gain is about inducing area reasoning at the transmitted the receiver. So handling and planning exception, and also detecting outliner data detection and pruning. Data AI reason and reasonability as well. So we can also define similarity in the semantic fields, equivalence, approximation, you know, to reuse uh, layers in a, a narrow network, functions, operators, and so on. And also in terms of energy and uh, efficiency and sustainability, because we are uh, really compressing uh, the data injected, sensed and injected into the data to intelligence chain. Uh, and we also have a uh, we did need for small memories or less layers in the in the in our inference uh, in process. Uh, also, we have indeed reduced communication network resource usage. For example, we not necessarily all the time needs to go to the terabit per second, or we might also need some tens of megabit per second in the communication. So, the shuttle model, seventy plus years old which has been very important, it's really a fundamental of our communication system, has pushed the system to go for never stopping rates of exploring high frequency bands. The more law also has pushed it to extreme integration and performance improvement. But now with 6G, we see there's a bottleneck. Where actually the traditional bottleneck is the reliability of the communication medium, so where we have to improve the, 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 the coding, the diversity, the, the, the resources they use in order to, to have, have a more reliable communication, but now it's drifting toward the reliability in, in decision-making, supporting, and actually in the how the intelligence interaction is performed in order to help intelligent agents to exchange information and to take the right decision. So what we promote here is the idea that including semantic and goal-oriented aspect of your 6G network attain an important step for system efficiency and sustainability. So communication now aims to convey the meaning or to accomplish a goal. So what is matter is the impact that the correct reception interpretation of a packet of the goal for the accomplishment. So different bits may have different re relevance in conveying information or fulfilling the goal we have desired. So we don't necessarily need to protect all the bits in the same way. We don't necessarily need to transmit all the bits. And that actually this define new trade-offs also in terms of hardware and open the way for new destructive concept to attain the sustainability of the horizon 2030 and even after. Another aspect, important aspect, are the wireless environment as a service approach, which actually it's uh, is followed by, by the RSG project. We actually use reconfigurable intelligence phases deployed in the environment in order to selectively boost uh, in, in a specific uh, areas the, the connectivity link the high localization precision and or the high secrecy and or the high energy efficiency or to uh, achieve a, a low electromagnetic field radiation. This concerns many types of applications, but it's based on this concept of orchestrating together together reconfigurable intelligence phases. So to conclude, there's a critical gap to fill between the system level identify ambition and what are the technology can be ready to deliver at the rise of 2030. Our real check is that to meet the performance and sustainability target of 6G, new art design 
and advanced technology will be fundamental and we need to really develop new one. So we need to work on new technology, new materials, also a new way to use these materials and, new, and this new application. And most of this technology does not exist yet. So it's really an open call for research innovation. We need to solve the, uh, the trade-off between the complexity and the power consumption. For example, in case of a, a, a multi-element transmitting antennas, we also need to work on heterostructure structure that will require to select the high silicon and also the 3.5 technology at the right place of the system and to present low lattice mismatches. We need also to use machine learning, assist the flexible energy efficient physical layer in order to enforce the communication, also have new processing of the hardware and new, a new flexibility. And we suggest a paradigm shift toward the goal-oriented semantic communication, which is a total new opportunity in joint design of hardware, artificial intelligence, and effective communication. Open new opportunity to relax constraint on hardware and define new schemes over uh, structure. I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you want to go more in details on, on, on this talk, I suggest you hear these three papers we published recently, the Art Foundation on 6G, the recovery of intangible phases for 6G smart connectivity, and beyond shunned towards semantic goal-oriented communication. Thank you very much for your attention.